welcome, welcome to the show. Thank you for watching. Uh, thanks for tuning in. We have we have a special guest, you know, like obviously we haven't had a guest this this quarantine season. So, it's, you know, it's a bit of a privilege to have someone who's taking the time out of their busy schedule um, to speak to us. Uh, this guy is a prolific striker. Some some mm -hmm. say the people that I've spoken to and even the research that I've done, he, he's very good. Uh, he has been very good and he still is to this day. Um, the thing that caught my eye was the fact of his personality. He's very bubbly, very, you know, very down to earth person. And also from speaking to, from uh, between our mutual friends as well. Um, he's a sound guy, really, really good individual, uh, great professional. He's played at teams such as uh, Charlton, uh, Gillingham. He's also featured in the Europa League. Like he's, wow. he's done a lot. He's played, a, he's played abroad. He has done a lot. He has done a lot. So I'm, I'm really interested to, you know, to, to delve deeper and to see who this guy is, you know, not just on the pitch, but also off the pitch as well. Um, so I, without further ado, I'd like to introduce you, Chris Dixon. Hey, listen, the build up there. The build up there had me, had me reminiscing, fam. I can't lie. I can't lie. I can't lie. I remember Elaine, yep. I was like, oh, shit. Yeah. You know, I done, was that me? I did all that? Fam. Yeah, you. Yeah, you. You know, nah, you nah, know. Nah. <laughs> I, I fully appreciate it. I fully appreciate it. Come on now. Any, any time, fam. Any, any time. No, nah, really appreciate it. Like, obviously, when I spoke to um, uh, Mark, you know, he, he said that yeah. he got you online. And, you know, I'll be honest with you, like, I, I've heard your name before, but I didn't know like the ins and outs of your career. But yeah. you know, from doing the research, I can't say I can't lie. Like uh, I say that it was quite interesting watching what you've done in your career and the fact that, like I said, that you played abroad. You know, you played at Charlton. You was one yeah. of the, one of the few non non league footballers to break through. You know, to get signed by Charlton at the time yeah. was such a big thing. Do you know what I mean? So you know, just respect to you and what you've done in your career and what you're doing now, which we'll also touch upon as well. You know, in terms of your is it CAD PT, all that movement? Uh, trying, there. trying, trying, <laughs> trying. Got, got, to, got to pass it on. So I'm saying, like, we, we take yeah. it all, take it all in, and we just get it all back out. So I'm saying, so yeah, man, we're trying. No, definitely, definitely. So like, obviously, you just wanted to open it up and just, just to give you the floor and just to say, who is Chris Dixon? You know, like, apart from the the, the footballer, you know, who who are you as a, as an individual? Like, um, I mean, I mean. When I'm when we're all dead and gone, and and there's a and as and as a someone coming up to have a speech about me, I think I, I would be very surprised if they didn't say that I'm a bubbly character. Um, my, I'm an infectious character. I'm positive. Mm -hmm. I'm mm -hmm. I'm kind of loud <laughs> at times, <laughs> um, but I'm about positive energy. I've always been about positive energy. Um, you, you you won't hear you don't really ever hear a bad word come out my mouth about about situations or anybody like i mean i've just been that kind of person my my energy a lot of people said my energy is infectious like i'm the kind of person i'll come in a room and and if i see that it's, it's, it's somber or whatever i'm trying to lift that room up so i'm saying like you can um, feel and, it already you can feel it i used to get told about it and i used to think nah that ain't really me but then on the, when, you're, when you're on the outside looking at somebody and then you see things in modern day technology as well now where you're, where you're looking back on videos and stuff and thinking, right, like, no, nah, I, I didn't realise I'd come across <laughs> like that. You know what I'm saying? So it's a, it's, a, it's a nice feeling to have and it's a nice feeling to obviously to share with other people. So I'm saying, because it's about positive energy. I'm not, I'm not, a negative, mm. I'm, I'm, I don't even believe in, in that negative spirit. So I'm saying that like, I'm a, obviously I'm a spiritual person as well. So I just, I like, I'm uplifting people. That's the main thing. So I'm saying. Mm. Nah, definitely, definitely, man. Um, so, like, where do we start? Like, I mean, like, in terms of the area that you grew up, like, if you could give us just like, a brief introduction, like, the area you grew up, how you managed to get signed, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Right. So, um, I was I was born in Dulwich, East Dulwich, um, but I, I grew up in an area called Woolwich. Right. Um, and, oh God. And, and, yeah. and like, literally, um, I grew up in an area where, at the time, obviously, it was. It, it, I think there was a lot of there was a lot of discontent. Not, 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 people didn't know what they wanted to do, um, if they were accepted. I remember, I remember obviously big ra racial issues were going on at the time with the whole Stephen Lawrence thing. Um, mm -hmm. And and I, even within my own self, it took me a while to re recognize who I was, you know what I'm saying? And, and I remember football-wise, football was always like a, a, 
a get out. So I'm saying something, something for me to just go and have fun, have fun doing. Now like we used to go ride bikes in the woods and and play knock down ginger and all them thing there. But <laughs> football, even from school time, was just something that like I just enjoyed, enjoyed doing. And obviously, just and, and and more than anything, I enjoyed scoring goals. Um, I'm probably one of the one of the only people, not one of the only people, but I'm a natural born entertainer in any in anything I do. So. You might get an exclusive today still. I might, I might tell you a little exclusive in a little bit still. But yeah, in general, in, ge- in general, I'm a natural born entertainer. So for me, when I first um, started playing football at any sort of level, I, was, I think I was nine years old, but I was playing like under 11 um, for a team called Pippin Hall. And at the time, I used to go to these summer camps. Um, and one of, at one of the summer camps, I, I was 11, I think I, I turned 11, and Charlton Athletic picked me up. Um, and I went on trial, but I didn't know what the hell that was. I don't know what, I didn't know where it was. I didn't understand it. I was like, I was down at Sparrows Lane training like, I think for the last three, for three weeks or so. Didn't know what, I didn't even understand what was going on. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was just like, I didn't know the whole youth team set up. I didn't know anything. I just thought, I'm, okay, I'm coming to play for another team. I'm going to go kick a ball. Didn't get picked up from that trial. Mm-hmm. Looking back on it, I realised now it's a trial, it was a trial, but I didn't get picked up from that trial. And um, fast forward, um, a few years later, when I started understanding where football could take you, um, I still didn't really venture down that road. It wasn't really my dream as such at that time. Right. I, had, I had a passion for something else. Here's the exclusive. So I had a passion for music. Okay. okay. Um, so while all, my friends would, while all of my friends, would, after their GCSE, would go into the same colleges and whatnot, I, was, I ended up going to the Brits Performing Arts College. Okay. Because wow. music was my thing. Music, acting, yeah. drum. Um, met loads of people there. Loads, met people that have gone on to be massively successful now. Katie Melua, Leona Lewis, Bashi. There was loads of them. So it was my dream to go that direction. But all the while, I was still playing football. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, was, I started playing for... I had a good friend, like one of my good friends, a guy called Lee Sugden. Um, we'd known each other from primary school. And he was playing for a team called Greenmead. And he was, and the man, they were, they were transferring to Era from Belvedere youth team. So I was like, he, he called me and said, look, where are you playing now? I said, I can't remember, I can't, I can't remember. I was with Robbins or Tevye or something like that, I can't remember. And he was, he was like, come, come down to us, we're going to go Era from Belvedere. And he made it seem to me like it was a big deal, wasn't it? Like, I'm like, right, okay, cool. And I'm seeing like, this is almost a transformation from going from kiddie football to youth team football. Mm-hmm. And um, so I jumped here. I said, yeah, let's go. Let's, let's see what it's all about. Um, within a year and a half, I was in the first team, um, and I had. But I remember my youth team. I had this trainer. Oh man, I had this trainer, black brother called Trevor. Oh, and he used to be on my back like none, like nobody's business. And I used to hate it. I used to hate yeah. it so much. But looking back now, he's probably the one of the greatest, right. greatest things that ever happened to my career. Yeah, because if it wasn't for him pushing me to wanting to be better, to got to got to to excel past, he already knew that I was better than most players at that age. But he was like, excel past them, let like, let them know that you're, they're out, you're out of sight. But I didn't really know he was doing it at the time. I was just thinking to myself, get off my back. They're yeah, jarring. you're picking on you. <laughs> yeah, you're picking on me, you're jarring me. So I'm saying these are these sprints. I remember we do these sprints where I would win. I knew I was going to win. Mm. Everyone knew I was going to win. But because I didn't sprint, sprint. He'd say, did everyone feel, did everyone feel like Dixie? Everyone used to call me Dixie then, innit? Did everyone feel mm. Dixie sprinted? And, and everyone's like, tentative. He goes, I didn't feel like Dixie sprinted. So everyone back to the beginning of the line. So boys are turning against me. So boys are turning against me. And I'm like, I'm not sprinting. Bro, we used to do this. This must have happened every training session at least six times. And I'm like, I'm not sprinting. I'm not, I'm not what am I sprinting for? But he was obviously trying to show me, listen, excel. Show these mm. boys exactly how good you are. And and you watch yourself fly past everybody, so yeah. I mean it was a it was a blessing a blessing I, and I, I owe him I owe him a lot. So I'm saying in regards to where he where he put my mindset um, later on in later on in my career because it made me realize how I needed to influence others as well. Yeah, yeah. What about just quickly? I'll just it just coming to the top of my head. You know, you you got a lot of support outside of you know. Um, or let's say for the trainer from Trevor or your coaches yeah. and that. What about at home as well? Did you get a lot of support at home, like with your parents? Um, strangely enough, yeah, it was a different kind of support. So my mum, my mum was the one that used to do the running around in regards oh, okay. to taking me to games and stuff and taking me to 
um, training sessions and even I think she was even the one that located my first ever football club like Pippin Hall 94 or something and um, whereas my dad would come to games um, around his work schedule and I would know he was there because being the Ghanaian father he was if he, he'd be in the car on the phone <laughs> but still watching from the car and if he saw me miss a, if he saw me miss a chance I would hear my full name Christopher <laughs> I'm hearing it I'm on the pitch and I can feel over there I'm thinking, I, I, these times, I thought he just dropped me and went, but he's in the car chilling, watching. Christopher, ah, what is this? Um, finish that one. And I'm like, oh man, I'm like this guy. So he used to put pressure on me that way because he wanted me to be the best. Mm. Whereas, but my mum was the one that did all the running around. I mean, but the support was definitely there um, because I, I just enjoyed sporting activities. So whether it was yeah. it was sports days, I wanted to win. Whether it was going to, I remember mean, I used to go to um, Cubs and Scouts and they had sports activities. I wanted to win. So, but my mum did a lot of the run and the run and I was forever grateful, so I'm saying. Yeah, no, that's good. That's good. Um, what else was, boys, is there anything you wanted to, sorry, I don't want to take up everyone's time, yeah. you know what I mean? I just wanted to ask one question. What, so, what, um, obviously, you said that your, your mum played a, a heavy role, obviously, in terms of your football career. Yeah. Um, how did your, what do you think your family did for you or what do you think that you did for your family in terms of like where you've put them in terms of from now, from, from then until now? Um, in regards to um, how, I, how I've put, where, where I've put my family, I mean, I, I, mean, I was, always used to want to look after my mum as much as possible, so I'm saying, and, and I was lucky enough to help her secure her house and whatnot. And, and, but I mean, all my siblings, we all, we all did, we all played a part in that as well, as well as obviously my parents. So it was just, it was for me, it was, it was as much as I'd, I'm get, I'd get out of the game, I'd want to give something back, especially to my mum. Um, my dad, my dad, uh, forever telling me he wants four by four. I'm saying, big man, chill out, innit? Like, like <laughs> you know, every day, every day. For, this guy, it's not even like he, uh, not, he wants it just to, like, to get, get a rap. My friend, he just wants it to stunt, innit? We're not Ghanaians, we like to show, we like to show, show too much. <laughs> I'm saying, bro, like it's not everyday standing and show show in it. Like just like let's enjoy, it. let's let, let enjoy, it. enjoy just life, breathing, breath, air. Yeah, what's this? Mm. But um, for me, yeah, I mean, I was able to uh, my sibling, my younger siblings as well. It, it it I was able to give show them things as well that not necessarily they won't acquire themselves later on, but at an earlier age. So whether it's holidays or whether it was getting my brother my brother's first car, helping him get his first car or or just any little things. I just wanted to help help them as much as possible because I felt like if the roles were if the roles were reversed at any time, my siblings would be the same. The same. And that's it. We're just we're we're we're, we're tightening it family in that way, so I'm saying in regards to always looking out for each other. Um but yeah, my mum's a spiritual warrior. That's that that I always say. And any any time I speak to somebody and like, they ask me, like where did you get how did you get to where you got to? And I say Honestly, my, my physical ability, yeah. But my mum's mom is I mean, she's a pastor, Cynthia Dixon. I, I should better plug her in it. So yeah, she um she just she pulled, pulled me through, pulled, she pulled she pulled me through. So I'm saying she pulled me pulled, pulled me through many 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 a time. And not only was she obviously like I said, not only she was an amazing mother to me, but she's obviously um spiritual spiritual warrior behind me as will fight anyone, any demon that wants to come your way. She'll just attack <laughs> that one direct. So, just on your um, career before we like kind of like go back to like maybe like charting and stuff. Yeah. Um, just talk about um, how hard was it like um, being abroad and training and and stuff like that and not being home. How was that um, transition? Um, initially, because of where I, where I've been playing at Charlton, it was it was a bit of a of a humble humbling, real quick humbling, and I felt like my ego, having left Charlton, was um, being tested because I left Charlton with this whole aura about me of I'm going to Cyprus and. I'm, I'm a big shot kind of thing, and and it was, and I and I, and I didn't need to come into this in that environment. I'm going to a club that they need me where, and it, and it was, and it wasn't, it wasn't anything to do with that. It shouldn't have been anything to do with that. But because of how my circumstances of me leaving Charlton ended up, 
I, I almost felt like I, I almost probably had, probably had a chip on my shoulder, if I'm being honest. Um, but they humbled me real quickly. Mm-hmm. The, the whole of Cyprus, the whole setup in Cyprus and the way, the way of living and everything humbles you massively. And it's exactly what I needed because had I kept that chip on my shoulder, um, I would have failed. I would have failed there, 100%. But um, everything, everything the setup over there in regards to um, you're walking down the road, people know you're a black guy. So I'm saying you're here for the sports. That's it. <laughs> you're you're yeah. playing for a football team or you're playing for a basketball team. That's why you're here. Um, or your or your guys are in Napa, which I did not know nothing about. Yeah. So it was a case of I was going over there. I was learning a new a new culture, a new country. Um, but the whole whole experience was very humbling because people walking around in flip flops, shorts, t shirt. There's no one out here trying to do, have flashy watches, flashy cars. It was nothing like that. It was just literally you're here, play football, enjoy our enjoy our country, embrace our culture, and then, and then, and, and and that's it. Yeah. And that I need, I needed that. I needed that. I didn't know that was that was what I was walking into, but I definitely needed it, and I and I appreciated it massively. Definitely. Talking about um, experiences, what what would you say was like one of your highlights in your career? You know, playing from like I said, or obviously featuring in Charlton. You know, maybe even going on loan, playing in the Europa League, playing in Cyprus. What was it for you that stands out? Before, um, before you answer the, that question, yeah, can you just Go talk? On. Like your your come up, like in terms of like how you got to Charlton, and like that okay. Kind of- um, so from if over there, um, I ended up um, I had a little ism with, with the manager if over there, and I think some of the staff there because I just wasn't happy with the way I was being treated, um, because I I genuinely felt that I was I got I I I exceeded my time there. I was I was probably better than this that level and. I wanted to move on, but I had nowhere to go as such. So it was a case of like, when we get an offer for you, you can go. But I, there was luck, luckily there was a, a mole in the in the camp um, who I, I can't I have to leave. I have to remain unnamed. Name, name, name. <laughs> but name. He was he was very 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 well connected with Dulwich Hamlet, and he basically kept in contact with me and said, look, he, he was training, he was, he was a coach at Europe over there, but he was, he was, he was well known at Dulwich Hamlet. And he said to me, look, I might have a move for you. Um, Dulwich were in the league above, doing relatively well. So he asked me to come along. Like, obviously, no, he said, look, if I can organise this, would you, want, would, you be, would you be interested in going? I was like, yeah, come on, that's a league above, uh, why, why not? Um, I ended up getting a loan move. I had a massive fallout of your Um to the point where they dropped me from the squad and told me I had to travel to I mean, Herm Bay or something like that. I was fuming. I'll never forget that. And then I was like, all right, cool. And then about a week later, I was at Dulwich. The paperwork got rushed through because they had a game that specific night. I mean, it was a Tuesday night. They had a game. And they were like rushing through paperwork. I had to fly down to, I think it was oh, Ashford or something like that. Um, and so I went down there. First time I'd ever met the boys. Never trained with them, nothing. Um, yeah. And played ninety minutes, scored scored a ninety second minute um, winner, um, right. and it's like that. Things like that make it very easy for the boys to accept you because you come in and you, and all of a sudden you've made you've made an impact straight away. So mm-hmm. from that day, I played six games, six games on loan at Dulwich, scored six in six, and then again ego came into play, and Dulwich manager offered me a deal for next season, and I and I was like. Nah, I feel I can go higher than this. Mm. Like if I'm able to come here and I'm scoring six and six at this level, I feel I can go higher than this. So I acquired an agent at that time, and he he got me Charles at Barnet. Um, the Charles at Barnet didn't work out. There was about sixty man, sixty man in the trial, and literally one person got picked out, Jason Punchin, out of the whole out of the whole the whole oh, group. Wow. <laughs> and. The Dulwich manager was in contact with me the whole time and said, look, I still want you to come back. I was like, okay, cool, no problem. Um, I ended up going back to Dulwich for that, for that season, but I wasn't even there for a season, if I'm honest. Um, it, literally, by, by December, I'd scored... By, by Christmas, I'd scored 25 goals. Um, Wait, what? By, <laughs> by, by, <laughs> by Christmas, I scored yeah. By Christmas, I scored 25 goals. Um, and literally, it was a case of 
he kept on saying to me, you never know who's watching, you never know who's watching. But I'm like, what are you trying to say to me, big man? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> like, you never know who's watching, you don't mean anything to me. I'm like, I don't, I just didn't know. I wasn't really, I still yeah. wasn't aware to the whole pro thing. So I'm saying, I, like, I, was, I was aware of it, but I wasn't, the, how he was saying it to me was like, some big club's going to come in for me. Yeah. Mm. I'm just like, nah, like, I'm thinking, where well, maybe, I don't know, like, a team in a couple of divisions above or something will come in for me. Um, but then I got injured in January. And I remember, cause I remember seeing, seeing clubs, I see, see representatives of clubs in the stands with jackets on and they got badges. And I'm thinking, okay, that's Swansea, QPR. Uh, okay. But again, people are saying, people will whisper and say, yeah, yeah, that's for you. But, and the manager will say, you never know who's watching. But I didn't think any of it. And then I got injured. So I got injured that month. Um, I broke a metatarsal in my foot. And I almost, if anything was going to happen, it was not going to happen that month. Um, and then luckily, um, I carried on. I came back from injury and I carried on my same scoring run. I, I ended, up, ended up getting 31 by March. And Charlton came, Charlton came in for me. And... I won't remember. I'll never forget. I was on a coach coming back from a um, Godalm in town. I didn't score. We won two 0 I didn't score. And the manager pulled me to the front of the coach, and he said to me, "Ah, oh, um, remember I keep telling you, you never know who's watching. Well, Hastings United have come in for you. Um, they've offered us seven hundred and fifty pound, and we're going to take it." So I'm like, "Huh? <laughs> like, Hastings United? I'm like, Big man, it's <laughs> I'm happy here. I'm humble. I'm cool. I'm banging in goals. I'm not going to know Hastings United. Do you know what I mean? What's this? Mm. He's like, nah, nah, we, want, we need the money. Like, we're going to take it. I'm like, no, nah, listen, 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 gaffer. I'm not going to know Hastings United, bro. But we could win the league here. So I'm saying, like, I'm quite calm. Calm. Let's do this. I'm saying. So he's like, oh, I'm only joking with you. Um, Charlton Athletic are coming for you. I said, ah? Oh? I said, now nah, you're definitely on band time. Now nah, you're on band time. Now you're definitely on Banta. I know you're on Banta. And he's like, no, nah, you're going on trial for Monday. I'm in my head, all sorts of stuff going through my head. So I'm thinking, I've got work on Monday. That's what I remember seeing things like work on Monday. Um, so I remember calling in to work and saying, look, I can't come in. Um, I've got a trial at Charlton. And I'll never forget, like, there was a woman at my workplace. Yeah. And I, 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 I'm cool with everybody, but she had a certain spirit towards me that, you know, when. I used to come in every week and have new, and a newspaper cutouts and say, look, oh yes. And someone would, or someone would say, someone would live in the South London area and say, oh, you scored again the weekend, didn't you? Oh, you scored again the weekend. And she's like, oh yeah. And I'll never forget, she was like, oh yeah, he's doing well, but we'll still be sitting here in, 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 a, in a year's time. Mm. I'll never forget. And it was, the, I, I believe that I'm, my motto in life is always about proving people wrong. Even if I'm doing it subconsciously, I don't even, sometimes I don't even know I'm doing it. And it's only when I, I'm upon reflection, I look back and I think, I was probably trying to smash in bare goals because that woman, every single week, Friday would, leave, Friday would leave the office and she'd be like, have a good weekend, oh, you'll probably score a couple of goals, but you know, we'll see you on Monday. And in my head, I'm thinking subconsciously, I'm going to go and pipe in some goals because you just spurred me on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you don't, you don't know, innit? It's, it's, like, subconscious is a, it's a, it's a different entity altogether. So uh, I ended up, um, coming, coming, saying to the, ring the manager and saying, look, I'm not going to be coming in on Monday. I've got Charles Charlton. And I remember the, by the end of the week, when I had to go back in the following Monday to say, look, I'm leaving. I looked at her and just say, <laughs> <laughs> you're alive. You see your life. <laughs> you see your life. What is what <laughs> I remember telling my mum, I told my mum that, that whole thing, she was, she was like, don't worry, I've got something for her. Put her, write her name. She always just say, write her name, write the person's name, write the person's name. Oh, we're going to put something on that one. And it's not necessarily going to put something on the person, but to, <laughs> put yeah. so you can prove that person wrong, so you can have shame on their face. Mm -hmm. No. And I remember even when, even, even like I think a year into my contract at Charlton, they offered me a new deal. And I remember that by that point, I've got to change my car, I've moved into a new apartment, whatever. And I went down to the work, went down to the office to say, like, to see the, to see the big boss, to be fair, because he was an Arsenal supporter. And he was, and he was saying, mm -hmm. obviously, Charlton, that's when I got relegated. And I, he was like, oh, man, I really want to see you playing the Prem. You're going to play against my boys, the Arsenal boys. And then, and then I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I was leaving the office and obviously everyone's saying bye, saying bye. And they, they're all looking at the window to see what I'm driving, in it. 
and I'm like, see you later, guys, see you later, guys. And it's, it was so, it, it was smug, but at the same time, it was, you doubted me, and you really didn't, you really didn't want good for me. I feel like that, that was the energy. You didn't really want good for me because you, were, you was really coming, telling, telling, telling me, oh, you'll be sitting here next year. Blah, blah, blah. I'm sitting here now. This is where I'm sitting next year. When I pulled up the big old Q7, she's like, oh my God, I can't believe it. Like, I'm looking, <laughs> I'm looking at her like, yeah, see you later. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I, I got a good feeling about it, but at the same time, again, it back, came back to the whole, it well, I, I, I felt like I was, I've experienced this over and over and over again in my career. This is what I've got to do to prove to you mm-hmm. what, I can, what I'm capable of doing and, and, and why to earn your respect. It shouldn't be that. You should, yeah. as a human being, you should look at me and think, you know what? Yes, you believe in yourself. And you know what? I believe in you too. Or, do you know what? I wish you all the best. You don't have to believe in me. Just wish me all the best. Yeah. Yeah, so, um, from that week trial, life change, life changing, life changing experience in regards to um, going on trial, had a, um, I think it was a training, training game, well, not a training game, we had a reserve game, sorry, against Fulham. And I scored two, two in that reserve game. I, I, I owe a lot to Kevin Lisby because <laughs> he didn't have to pass to me and he, he, he put on a plate for me. It's open goal tapping. Um, but I owe a lot to all the players in that game. A lot of players, they just kept on feeding me, kept on feeding me, literally play your game. And I got two, one, five, one in the end. I think I got another assist for Miles Weston. And that was it. Literally, by the end of that week, I'd signed a, um, a two-year contract. 